All right, boys. It's been a little while, but been working on the new shop that you see in the background and been working on bringing in rivets, aluminum, uh, sheeting, hinges, about anything you guys need for your DIY build, I'm gonna have it. So just reach out to me. I'll get you squared up on what you need and when it'll be in. And also check out uh, the new TB Nation site at tbnation.net for all of your marine needs. Thanks. All right. I think I finally got it figured out. It's kind of an awkward spot, but. So, these are the tracks that I had made. And I will be stocking here directly. So, I framed this out as one big compartment that you can see here. It's going to be, there's going to be a cooler on this side. There's going to be a wall here. I'm going to insulate all the rest of this. I'm going to line this all with FRP. This is going to become my electrical compartment to the right. So then I have a double track. I'm going to notch this in right here. That's what all these marks are for that you can see. And I'm going to notch this in and lay this in here so I have a separation of two separate lids. So I'm going to show you step by step how I cut these in. the verticals and then I scored it so now you can just bend these tabs off
We're going to clean them up. But that's going to allow, once that's all cleaned up properly, it's going to allow this to drop down in here perfectly flush. We're going to cut these off. That'll be next. Once we get it in there right. So now we have to clean up all these little edges and all these that are sticking up. Now, I'm not saying that this is the only way to do this. This is just the way that I've found works. All right, now that those are all cleaned up, you can get that to fit in there snugly. You can see I, you probably can't see from right there. I overcut this one just slightly. Now, you have to cut this side off. And you're going to cut to right here. So, I'm just trying to very carefully eyeball these out with my grind line. Then I'm eyeballing from the other side to where I think I got that. So now we got to remove this wing and this piece to this corner. And we got to do that on all four pieces. Probably be just as easy to use the grinder, cut that and cut this, but I'm going to do it on a chop saw. All right, so here's the rest of it. So if this was just a corner, 
then I would just cut like a three by three piece. But since it's so short, I cut this at three by eight. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna seal this with 5200. I don't have any 5200 open and I don't wanna open it just for this little thing. So I will seal this here. This will get one rivet here, one rivet here, one here, one here. That will fasten this up underneath of there. What is this is gonna do is seal this joint and connect everything together. So once you have this fastened in there, then when you drop this down on top of this, so now once you drop this down on top of this, is all you need is one rivet here, one rivet here, one rivet here, one rivet here. That will flush everything up perfectly and it's gonna seal your bottom gap. So if you have a line of 5200 here and then this is underneath of this, you don't ever know it was there, but it's gonna seal those four seams. So now the only thing that's not sealed is this spot here that we were talking about. So that's gonna be the purpose of this. Now the next thing is, I like to use these 30 gallon, I think they're made by Class A, um, they're RV water tanks. So, yeah, www.classacustoms.com. I get them off of Amazon. They're $53, and I think they're $21 shipping. These are sealed. These two are not. You can just go get a three-quarter PVC plug fitting, put some 5200 on it, put one in there, put one in here. Now you have a sealed tank. Now, what I like to do is, you can see this is high. It doesn't matter if you're 13 inches. My deck is 17 inches deep. It doesn't matter what it is. When I get to it, I'll make a video on it, but you're just gonna cut this off. Cut it off wherever you want. I'm gonna put a drain plug in the bottom of mine. So I'm gonna raise it up with an inch and a half of foam so I can get a 90 degree fitting underneath of it. I'm gonna run a drain line back and out the back of the boat so it, it drains. Not a big deal. You know, this stuff is quarter inch thick. You know, it's uh, it does cost a little bit more money than a tote, but I think it's way stronger. I mean, this shit is, it's stout. I'm pushing on it. The whole boat's moving. You know, it flexes a little bit in the top, but as far as downforce goes, these things are stout. You know, they're not going to crack a year down the road or two years down the road. I think this is the way to go. Um, this particular one is 12 inches wide, 17 and a half tall. I believe it's 34 inches long. So you got a lot to play with. Even if you cut it all the way down here, you're still giving yourself... 12 inches of water you know you can make it whatever you want and whatever the need is that fits your boat that's the nice thing about it and they have them in different sizes for you catfish guys you can get these in like 60 gallon this is a 30 by the time i cut it down it's going to be a 22 or 24 but if you want it in a 60 you can get them five foot long make a catfish live well out of it you know, I'll end up cutting the, the top off. I'll make my own splash guard, incorporate it all into the framing, and then you can do whatever you want to it. But I'll end up putting my tracks on it, and I'll make them so that they lock down over top of this, and they'll be sealed. 
and I'll have a nice uniform track for a nice aluminum lid so everything comes out right. But I do think that uh, these are definitely the way to go. You know, if you insulate all around them and they're all in there solid with foam, it'd be great. So that is where my live well is going in this. And I still have about 16 inches by 24 here. My gas tank's going to end up right here. I am going to run lithiums. There'll be two lithium batteries here. Actually, there'll be one. This is going to be a uh, 36 volt lithium, which is one battery, weighs 45 pounds. I'm getting from underground power to run my 36 volt Altrex. And then on this side, I'm going to have one 12 volt lithium for all of my accessories and starting my motor. So that's kind of the layout in the back. I still have to run tracks. I did use inch and a half angle this way, slid one underneath, riveted it together to make all of my walls super stout. And actually, if you look, you can see the floor inside this compartment is actually four inches thick. In this compartment, it's only two inches thick because I put my walls in first, hooked them in with a piece of angle. Then I cut another piece of foam to go in here, which in return keeps these walls so they can't pop out. So all my walls are all locked in. This was a piece of 040 aluminum scrap that I had. You can see there's a couple of cut marks in it. But I'm going to put gator skins in here, so I'm not worried about it. You can see it moves a little bit. I just used some 5200 on top of the foam. I just glued the aluminum to it. I did run a piece of aluminum angle upside down. You can see it in the corner. I ran it around the perimeter, glued it to the foam. That way I could just put four rivets in there to hold this down. And it's pinched to those, which is in return glued to the foam. So if I pull these two rivets, I could probably lift this whole thing out. It does move some, but it's locked in there. Once there's a battery on top of it, it's not going anywhere. And I didn't add, but probably a pound in the aluminum in there to give it something solid for my battery to sit on. And you can see I did the same thing here. This is going to get gator skins on top of it, but this piece actually does move. It's a piece of two inch foam. I just put a piece of angle on the outside edge. Then I put this 040 because my last rib is like clear up here. And I didn't want this going all the way to the back because yes, your water travels down these tracks. If any water gets underneath the deck, if it gets back here, it has to be able to get to the drain plug. And this boat, my drain plug's over here. So any water that collects all along the back side has to be able to travel back against the transom, get underneath this hole down here to come over here and get out here. So that is why I leave mine back four to five inches from the back of the boat so that water can travel here. You know, you just got to keep that clean. There is two inch foam there, you know, so but it is rigid so I can set my gas tank back here. There will be gator skins back here. So when I'm all done, you won't see any of this. This will all be nice and clean. You know, it's all gonna get stuck together. These walls are gonna get gator skin or turf, one or the two. Um, and the same thing with all these. I did this one the same as the other side. It's two inch foam walls. And then uh, you can see I wedged a couple pieces of two inch foam down here. It's a piece of 040 scrap I had. I just bent it on the edge of the table. It's not perfect, but it's decent. Ran two pieces of angle, one on each end, four rivets in there to hold that down, glued it. And I actually bent this one up here, put it underneath this piece of angle and riveted in because I'm going to pour foam that cavity. So now it'll keep that pour foam from spewing in there and I'll pour foam all this in once I'm 100% done with the wiring. 
the same thing is going to happen over here. Once I'm done and I get my piece of FRP in here, I'll pour foam down this hole. I'm going to back foam all of this side. Same thing up here. Pour foam, pour foam, pour foam. You know, I'll have to wiggle my conduit around, but you fill all that in. That's a four inch wide cavity that goes down to nothing over 18 inches. That's a ton of foam. Fill it all in once your wiring's done. You know, you can see all the conduits I ran. I have wires coming out everywhere. So try to account for everything that you need because once you foam it, you're not getting back in there. So, but that's the plan. Kind of get a little, uh, a little bit of insight on that. I may even, I would have liked to box this off and pour foam this whole back corner. The problem is the plug. So I may end up, once I'm done with the wiring, running a bulkhead across here, run a piece of aluminum here and up here so I don't fill this in, and then fill it from here up and pour foam this whole back corner. But I haven't made it that far yet. You can see I left this open just for that reason. And the same thing that happened over here. This one, I'm not going to do the bottom. But I do plan on building a wall here. And a wall here. And then... So, back to where I was at. So, the... There end up being a wall here. Once I got... I wanted to get all my wiring in this corner so I didn't block this off. So... Once there's a wall in here, it's going to get tied in back here. They'll get a conduit. It's going to come off of this. And it's going to come into this compartment. And there'll be a wall here. Then I will fill in this corner and this side with pour foam. I am going to order a glove box here. And I have to get my speakers in here. So... I may even just run, I may ditch the glove box idea and run both of my speakers right here and then put my radio here. And then once I do that, I'm going to have to make a foam barrier on the back side and then just pour foam in this whole cavity. All of this will get pour foam all the way along. And then up in the front, I got to get the rod tube barrier built for my tubes, get the tubes in. All of this is going to get pour foamed all up underneath the front bow. The rod tubes over there will get pour foamed also. Um, I am going to leave this cavity hollow underneath the trolling motor pedal because if the pedal is out, you can reach your arm up underneath for the trolling motor bolts to put on a new one and take off an old one. And I left this open in the center underneath the seat there so that you could shove life jackets and stuff in this compartment and up underneath. So the stuff that you don't use all the time, I'll be able to hide it in there. So that was kind of the plan. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with this badass step I built. So, I got to get, I got to figure out how to get some a couple of walls down in there. I should have did that before I put it all together. Um, shit happens. Even I make mistakes. So, maybe that little walkthrough help explain a few things. Um, I don't know. I'm still new to this stuff. Trying to, uh, trying to do the best I can for you guys. I'll try to start doing some more step by step as I do the live well, as I do the pour foam, to try to give you guys as much information as I can and break it down into, you know, 10 different videos on a boat instead of just grouping everything together. Um, the editing chews up quite a bit of my time. So I can't just really whip through that stuff. Thanks.